Hi there, my name is Mike, and today I'll be teaching you all about CSS. In this video, we're going to go over CSS syntax, uh, how and where to utilize CSS, and we'll go through an example of uh, using the things you've learned and how to Google things, really, uh, so that you can work on CSS without having to memorize everything. Uh, so to start, I'm going to go ahead and make a folder uh, for this video, which we'll calls video, and open up old Visual Studio code. Uh, if you're interested in learning Visual Studio Code or HTML, I've got videos on both of those things on my YouTube channel. Okay, first things first, we're going to need to make an HTML file. Now, you need to have HTML to write CSS, but you don't need uh, CSS to write HTML, uh, as you saw in the last video. It's just the HTML looks a little boring without any CSS in it. Uh, so to start, I'm going to go ahead and do the Emmet abbreviation to just get a structure going. Uh, and we'll start off by showing you where and how you can use CSS. So before we go into how to write your own CSS, you need to be able to create a place to create CSS. Uh, so there are three ways that you can do this. Uh, one way is we can make a file, and we'll call this style.css. Uh, and then we link this style uh, file to the, the HTML file. And we do that in the head. So I would just type link. And then you can see that there's an automatic uh, autofill for CSS. We're going to go ahead and click that. Uh, you can see the syntax for this is uh, instead of having an open and a close, it's just the open. And we say link and rel style sheet. That's just saying that it's a style sheet. Uh, and then we say href to reference the file name. And then we put in the file name. In this case, style.css is our file name. Uh, so this would link this to our HTML page. And if we were to write some CSS in here, uh, it would work for this HTML page. Another way you can do this is in the head, you can say style and uh, just make a style tag. Uh, you need to open and close this one. And then just in here, this is basically the same as a CSS file. And the third way to do this is in the body uh, as you're writing HTML. Uh, if I was working on here, I could just say as an attribute of the tag, uh, just style equals, and then I could write uh, CSS in here. Uh, so the, that's the three places you can utilize CSS, uh, but that's not very useful if you don't know CSS. So let's go into that. Uh, so basic CSS syntax, uh, for the purpose of this video, by the way, I'll do most of my CSS in the style tag. Uh, CSS syntax is first, you need to access a tag. Uh, so if I wanted to access this div tag, right? And uh, say I wanted to change the background color of this dig ta div tag. Uh, I could do this in several ways. I could type in div, and then I use these curly brackets. Uh, and then in these curly brackets, I can say an attribute name and what I want it to be. Uh, so let's say I want to change the background color. I can just say background color, and then a colon, and then what I want that background color to be. Uh, so that, let's set it to aqua. And then I put a semicolon. And then if I wanted another add, uh, to add another attribute, I could do it below right here. Uh, but we'll just do one for now. Uh, and so, okay, for there to be background color, I need something in there. So I'll just say, hello, and save that. And then if I were to open this up in Google Chrome, you can see that now there's a background color on that hello. Uh, so this works for pretty much anything. There's all kinds of CSS tags, and you can uh, change any of them uh, for whatever you want. Uh, so let's say we add some padding there. Uh, so padding will kind of uh, fluff out in between the text and the edges. So we'll add five pixels of padding. You can see that that added a little bit of padding there. Uh, let's say we wanted to make it a set width. So let's say 50 pixels of width. You can see that that shrunk that down. Uh, so there's all kinds of CSS tags, and it's going to take you a while to memorize them all. Uh, but what you can do is just as you're coding, you can just look up uh, if you need the width CSS tag, just look up width CSS tag, and there will be a W3 schools or whatever uh, page. You'll get very familiar with W3 schools, this website here. Uh, they have pages on pretty much every CSS uh, property. So the way that things are right now uh, with this style, I'm saying this is these are the properties of every single div I make. So if I make another div here, uh, let's get rid of these just for simplicity's sake. If I make another div here and they both say hello, you can see that both of them have the padding and the color and the width. Uh, but let's say I just want the top one to have the padding and the color of the width. Uh, as it is now, I can't do that with uh, how I set this up, uh, but I can with classes. So what a class is, is this is an attribute within the uh, tag. You wanna do that before that greater than sign. 
uh, I just say class equals, and then I do double quotes or single quotes, doesn't really matter. Uh, and then I just put a name for a class. So let's call this class. Or if that's kind of confusing, I'll just name it D. Uh, so now if I want to access only the div with the class of D, uh, I would do instead of just D, I would say dot D. And then I do the curly brackets. And if I move all this into here, you can see now only the top one has it. Another way to do this is with IDs. So IDs are a little bit different than classes. They work the same for CSS, but uh, for JavaScript, there's a bit of a notation that classes are, you can use as many classes as you want. So I can say class D, class D, and that works. Uh, but then IDs, you only wanna have that for one. Uh, so if I set this to IDD, uh, how I would access that is instead of a dot, that is a hashtag. Uh, so you can see that that works. Uh, you can actually have these both be ID D. That is fine. Uh, but that's not uh, syntactically correct. Uh, normally, you want to have only one thing be a single ID. Uh, you can do it for CSS. It's just considered bad practice. Uh, so those are the three ways of accessing CSS. And you can see that CSS is actually pretty simple. All you need to do is learn these little property names. And you can do that by just Googling them as you go. As you run across different things you want to do, uh, you just go ahead and Google it. Now, it's like if you wanted to center text, we can just look up center text CSS. There will be a W3Schools link, and we can see the way I would do that is text align center. And if I plop that in there, you can see that the text is now in the center of the thing. Because we set the width, it's not in the center of the screen. It's the center of its own width. Uh, but without this tag here, you can see that it's aligned to the left. But with that, it's aligned to the right. Uh, so yeah, uh, I guess I can go into an example really quick of how we can use CSS. Uh, so let's make something from the Apple website. Uh, let's go ahead and make this uh, this little blue uh, COVID reminder thing here. Uh, so if I wanted to do this, uh, first things first, I want to get that blue color. Uh, so a helpful trick here is extensions for color picking exist. Uh, so I can do this here where I, I utilize this extension. It's just a Chrome extension called color pick eyedropper. Uh, and then I just have an eyedropper where I can get this color. Uh, so that, that is a hexadecimal color. It's not a HTML color name. Uh, so I need to have a hashtag before that when I do that uh, hexadecimal color. And you can see now our divs have that same blue color background. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of one of the divs because we're only going to make this one bar. Uh, and next up, uh, the text color is white. So I can just do color white for that. Go ahead and refresh that. Uh, the next thing, uh, this padding, it looks like a little more than what we had. So I'm going to make that 10 pixels instead of 5 pixels. Uh, next, there is no set width. It, the width is equal to the whole screen. So I'm going to save that. And we can see that we're coming across a problem here. Uh, there seems to be some padding built in uh, to the HTML file. We didn't set any padding around the entire thing. We set, uh, I'm sorry, we didn't set any margin. Padding is inside, margin is outside. It's a little bit confusing. Uh, we didn't set any margins, uh, but if we inspect element, this is a useful thing to do, right click inspect. Uh, we can see that on this body tag, there seems to be eight pixels of margin. Uh, so up in my style, I'm going to say body, and I'm going to set that margin to zero. Uh, sometimes browsers have built-in CSS like this. That's just a standard. Uh, so you want to be sure to clear that out uh, when you're writing your code. We can see that that looks a lot better and more like apples now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take this text. Uh, it's not going to let us copy and paste, is it? I'll just type it really quick. Okay, that is typed out. And lastly, it seems that our font is a little bit different. Also, the padding's a little off. I'll add three pixels to that. Okay, padding is good. So to change the font, uh, the name for that is font family. And then you can see that I've got a few installed. I'll just use this one. I think uh, it's just a sans serif font. Uh, and that looks pretty much just like Apple's thing. Uh, so you can see that with the power of CSS, we were able to recreate a professionally made uh, part of a website. So you can imagine how you could use CSS like this with a little bit of Googling. 
uh, now that you understand the syntax and how to utilize CSS in your HTML files, uh, you are all ready to go. Uh, so thanks for watching and please do like and subscribe slash comment if this video helped you out at all uh, and have a great day.